Welcome, friends, to this time of online worship at Palm Springs Presbyterian Church. As always, we are so glad that you are able to join us today. Wherever you are joining us from, we hope today that you will find in the time of our worship God's deepest blessings. As we worship today, we still worship apart, uh, not yet gathering as a congregation. And I would just let you know that in this moment, your session, the governing board of this Presbyterian Church, is discerning our next steps and how it might look in the, in the coming months for us to gather. There is no particular news I can share with you other than to say that your session is praying and discussing uh, and seeking to follow the best possible advice um, from the most appropriate sources, our local health officials and our community leaders, as well as leaders in the church. So please be patient with us and be a part of the conversation if you would like to. Creative ideas are truly welcome in this, in this time and in this place. As we worship today, we worship during a time of a deep unrest in our country, and we need to recognize that. And we need to hold that in some way as we worship. In this moment, my friends, I know it is difficult to find a sense of peace. In our scriptures today, we will hear of the Holy Spirit of God hovering over the waters at the time of creation, bringing order out of chaos, bringing uh, something new out of something not very well defined. Perhaps we can find peace in that this morning, that our Creator God, Creator Christ and Holy Spirit is constantly at work in us and among us. And just knowing that our God is always going after a renewing work through us and in us and for our whole planet, indeed, um, especially at this time, those places of unrest, perhaps we can find just a little bit of peace in that. And that would be the peace that I would offer you this morning. As I say to you, may the peace of our holy triune God be with you. Please share that peace in whatever way you can. Good morning, Palm Springs Presbyterian Church. Um, we'd like to go over the life of the church at this time. This um, is a status from our church regarding when it's going to be open for in-sanctuary services. Uh, we understand our Palm Springs leaders are beginning to allow houses of worship to open for worship, but with extremely strict restrictions and requirements. Our session is staying informed and current on these rules as they begin to be developed. At this time, there are no plans for opening our church for worship. However, we will continue to keep you informed as our session evaluates the situation to ensure the maximum safety for everyone. And of course, we will continue to provide our online services for you each Sunday. 
Regarding the June devotionals, the office is preparing to mail you the June devotional pamphlets. If you would like to receive them, please respond to Peggy's email to you confirming that you would like to receive them. If you have not received her email, please call her at the office and let her know you would like to receive them. She will mail the June devotionals immediately to all those that confirm to her that they would like to receive them. If you wish not to receive them, there is no need to respond. Our events this week have been the same for a few weeks. Our prayer and praise time will be today directly following the service at 11.15 a.m. Access to this meeting will be by the free teleconference on the screen. So make a note of the dial-in number and the access code so that you can participate in the prayer and praise time. The Bible study is Thursday, <clears throat> June 10th at 1.30 p.m. <clears throat> Access to the Bible study meeting will be held using Zoom. Please check your email for instruction, instructions to join the Zoom Bible study meeting. Staying connected, Friday, June 12th at 11.30. Access to the Staying Connected meeting will be by the free teleconference on the screen. Again, please make a note of the dial-in number and the access codes that are on your screen. Please join me in wishing two very special individuals a happy birthday. Happy birthday, Nancy Spencer. Nancy is a dear friend to us all and has been a longtime member of our church family. Happy birthday, Nancy. Happy birthday, Alex Danson. Alex, you see every week during our service playing the piano. We have been so blessed with Alex's talent and wonderful music for many years. And he is responsible for us being able to bring our online service to all of you each week. We appreciate all that you do and wish you a wonderful birthday. Join me in the responsive reading for the call to worship. Mighty wind who danced over the deep and surveyed the shapeless void, dance over us now and ready us for your creative purpose. Divine word who commanded unruly chaos and called forth light and life, call to us now and open us to new expressions of grace. Eternal artist, who formed us in your likeness and claimed us as kin. Reform and refine us to be bearers of your blessing. Holy Trinity, Creator, Christ, Spirit, who gathered the primeval waters, gather us in, then send us out, our voices echoing creation's song. How majestic is your name in all the earth. Let us join now in our thanksgiving for baptism. The Lord be with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. O Lord our God, we give you thanks for the grace that is at work in us through the gift of our baptism. The sign of your threefold name, the communion of your faithful people, the promise of your glorious realm. By the power of your Holy Spirit, 
poured out upon us in baptism. Let your grace and peace grow in us until we gather at your heavenly throne to give you thanks and praise forever. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Join me in the responsive reading for the prayer of adoration and confession. Though God fashioned us in the divine image and declared us very good, sin shadows the sacred in each of us. Still the spirit moves over us, among us and within us, beckoning us to new life. Let us confess the ways we have denied our God-given identities and return to the one who created and called us good. Lord Jesus, you send us to make disciples of all nations, but we focus our energies inward and shy away from sharing the good news in word and deed. You charge us to teach your commandments, but we struggle to obey them and neglect to model them for others. You assure us of your abiding presence, but we doubt this promise and disregard your spirit, denying the power you give us to do your work. Forgive us, Lord, and renew us to be the church you created us to be. Wash us with your grace and commission us for service in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Please join me for a moment for silent reflection. Please join me now in the responsive reading of the Assurance of Forgiveness. Children of God in the waters of baptism, God the parent claims us as beloved. God the Son calls us as disciples. God the Spirit commissions us for service. In the waters of baptism, the triune God raises us to new life. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God.
As we join together in prayer this morning, as you hear the words, Lord, in your mercy, your response is, hear our prayer. Let us pray in the Spirit who helps us in our weakness, interceding with sighs too deep for words. Lord, in your mercy. Gracious God, we lift up prayers today for this nation in which we live. Send the healing spirit into our midst in all communities, especially communities of color in this agonizing moment. Help us, O gracious God, to recognize not only our complicity in systems of injustice, but also our call to challenge them. Lord, in your mercy. We lift up prayers this morning for the family of George Floyd and for all the families of young black and women who have been taken from us, often in brutal ways, and always in disproportionate ways. Help us to heal as a nation. Bring us a new word by your Spirit that we might transform systems of hate and brutality. Lord, in your mercy. In the Spirit, we pray today also for the Church. Let us be faithful witnesses to the risen Lord, making disciples, baptizing, and teaching, and obeying everything that God has commanded. Especially in this moment, remembering the commandment that Jesus gave, that we love one another, just as Jesus has loved us. Lord, in your mercy. In the Spirit, we pray for the earth. Teach us to be good stewards of your creation, caring for the earth you have made, so that all creatures may be fruitful and flourish. Lord, in your mercy. In the Spirit, we pray for all nations. Extend your reign of peace throughout the earth. Fill the strong with compassion and humility and crown the weak with honor and dignity. Lord, in your mercy. In the spirit, we pray for a planet in the grip of pandemic. As new spikes of cases now show up in Latin America, Gracious God, by your spirit, move in and among all peoples, engendering with them, within them correct responses so that all might be safe. Lord, in your mercy. In the spirit, we pray for this community. Help us to remember that you are with us always. Let those who worship sense your presence. Let those who work for justice sense your peace, and those who doubt be strengthened in faith. Lord, in your mercy. In the Spirit, we pray now for those that we love. By the holy kiss of your grace and peace, heal the sick, comfort those who suffer, welcome strangers, and reconcile enemies. We lift up now for your love and care those whose names are upon our hearts, those that we both know and those that we do not know. We lift them now to the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In the Spirit, we pray to you, O God, confident that all things work together for good for those who love you and are called according to your purpose. Above all, we give you thanks, O God, that nothing can separate us from your love. In Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. 
And now, with the boldness of the children of God, let us say together the prayer that Jesus taught. As we pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Please, please join me in the prayer for illumination. Holy, holy, holy one, guide us by the spirit of truth to hear the word of life you speak and to give all glory, honor, and praise to your threefold name, through Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. The Psalter lesson this morning is Psalm 8, verses one to nine. Please join me in this reading. O Lord, our sovereign, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory above the heavens. Out of the mouths of babes and infants, you have founded a bulwark because of your foes to silence the enemy and the avenger. 
When I look at your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars that you have established, what are human beings that you are mindful of them, mortals that you care for them? Yet you have made them a little lower than God and crowned them with glory and honor. You have given them dominion over the works of your hands. You have put all things under their feet, all sheep and oxen, and also the beasts of the field, the birds of the air, and the fish of the sea, whatever passes along the paths of the seas. O Lord, our sovereign, how majestic is your name in all the earth. The Hebrew lesson this morning is Genesis 1, verses 1 and 2, and 4a. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void, and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. Our reading from the Gospel today is from the Gospel of Matthew, from the 28th chapter, verses 16 through 20. This is the conclusion of the Gospel of Matthew in which the disciples have returned to Galilee from the city of Jerusalem following the death, resurrection, and ascension of, of Jesus Christ. Now the 11 disciples went to Galilee to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshiped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. This is the word of the Lord. Friends, as we continue our worship on this Trinity Sunday, this Sunday in which we recognize the always creative, uniquely relational God who we who we gather to give praise to this morning, we also meet with a certain amount of heaviness. You would probably have to have been living under a rock if you had not learned the horrible news of the death of George Floyd this week. And it is something that uh, we are all resting very uneasily with, and we want to recognize that. As we watched the news unfold this week, and we're so unsettled by the, <clears throat> excuse me, by the blatant cruelty that was displayed by those Minneapolis police officers. We also paused to lift up prayers for them that God might be able to work in and through them in a transformative way, as well as prayers for the family and friends of George Floyd. It is not an easy prayer to lift up, uh, a prayer that seeks some kind of pathway towards forgiveness and renewal for people that do commit 
cruel acts, but I believe that God, in this moment, in this space, invites us to do just that. This week, as we watch the news unfold, two stories. One that I watched on television about a news conference uh, held by officials in Minnesota, including the young African-American mayor of the Twin Cities, um, really struck me. And the way that young mayor spoke uh, not only struck me, but troubled me. He shared with those that were listening um, his deep grief, his anger, and his frustration with a system that just doesn't seem to be reforming. And to paraphrase him, he longed for, he longed for an example within the history of this country, within the history of the state and city in which he lived and served. He prayed for uh, a remembrance of a pivot point that we might claim in this moment to turn in a new direction. Sadly, he could not, he could not produce one. And it, it struck me how terribly, terribly sad that was. That over the last 400 years, we have still not managed in, in even some very basic ways to restructure this society that we call free, this society in which we value liberty, that we cannot, um, from this space, recognize a time in which we have made positive and powerful and lasting, and lasting change. It was, it was a sad moment for me. Another story that I heard, and this was a story on NPR. Uh, the story of a 17-year-old African-American man uh, getting ready to graduate from high school who has been blessed with the gift of sprinting. He is a world-class athlete even at his young age, and had school been able to continue this year, most likely would have set the school record in the 100-yard dash, running it in, I think, just over 10 seconds. And don't quote me on that, because maybe that's not a great time for a 100-yard dash, but he was fast enough and talented enough and trained enough to produce that school record. His mother in this story sadly recounted how she had to teach her son that when he was outside in his neighborhood, it was unsafe for him to run because of the message it might send to local law enforcement. As a matter of fact, this young man recounted a story in which after going to the store, I think at about age 10, because of his love for running, he simply ran on his way home and was literally stopped by a Caucasian woman and asked, young man, did you steal something from that store? Is that why you were running? The young man was flabbergasted because it just wasn't a part of his upbringing, his moral character, um, his respect for others um, that would have even allowed him to steal from the store. These two stories, I think, are troubling for us. And we need to pause and listen for these stories. We need to pause and listen. Because not only do we hear words of frustration and anger, uh, grief and deep sadness, but within the voices of these people who have been so horribly victimized by this system in which we live, perhaps we can also hear a word from God. A group of middle governing leaders, uh, leaders in our church system of presbyteries and synods, have, I believe, helped us in this time by producing a very powerful 
statement of lament. It comes from many voices, and it needs to inform our hearts in this moment because, my friends, those of you who share my complexion, those of you who share my privilege, those of us that are often the recipient of blessings while others are the recipients of curses, we need to raise our own lament and make our own confession. And humbly, humbly offer ourselves to the transformation that perhaps God could only provide in this moment. I share now this brief video with you. How long, Lord, must we call out for help and you do not respond? Or cry out violence, but you do not save? How long, O oh Lord, must your children die violent deaths? Hasta cuando, oh Señor, tus hijas y tus hijos sufrirán muertes violentas? How long, O oh Lord, how long, O oh Lord, must your children die violent deaths? or blood be spilt by hands that wield power. O su sangre será derramada por las manos de aquellos en el poder. We hear the cries of all who have been slain. We hear the cries of all who have been slain. We hear the cries of all those who have been slain. This day, we hear the groans of George Floyd. This day, we hear the groans of George Floyd. And countless others. And countless others. Trayvon Martin, Eric Garner, Walter Scott, Breonna Taylor, Philando Castile, Ahmad Arbery, heal us of our sin, O oh Lord. Their blood still cries out from the ground. Su sangre aún clama desde la tierra. Their blood still cries from the ground. And the all those whose still blood still cries out, out from the, the ground. ground. We hear the agony of those who have died through abuse, abuse, neglect, neglect, torture, torture, and bloodshed, and bloodshed. Create in us clean hearts, O God. Create in us clean hearts, O God. Create in us clean hearts, O God. Do not cast us away from your presence. Do not cast us away from your presence. Do not cast us away from your presence. But you, O oh Lord, are not far away. But, but you, O oh Lord, are not are far, far from away. us. But you, O oh Lord, are not silent. But, but you, O oh Lord, Lord, are not, not silent. silent. We know that you have spoken, O oh Lord. Therefore we stand together with your tears and with your faithful love. Therefore we stand together with your tears and your faithful love. Therefore we speak together the words of Jesus. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. 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 Because God has anointed me to proclaim good news for the poor. Because God has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. God has sent me to proclaim freedom to the prisoners and recovery of sight to the blind. To let the oppressed go free. We stand arm in arm for freedom of prisoners. We stand arm in arm for freedom of the prisoners. We stand arm in arm for recovery of sight for the blind. We stand arm in arm for the recovery of sight for the blind. We stand arm in arm to let the oppressed go free. We stand arm in arm to set the oppressed free. We stand arm in arm to proclaim justice and grace, righteousness and mercy. We stand arm in arm to proclaim justice and grace, righteousness and mercy. Amen. 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 Almighty God, as we hear the blood cry from the ground, we ask that you would heal our hearts, that you would mend our relationships, and that you would unite our country in justice and peace, love, forgiveness, and reconciliation. For you hold the power of a new heaven and a new earth. In Jesus' name we give thanks. Amen. Amen.
A quote came to me this week that I think might begin to help us see a direction in which we might turn. A quote from Neil Donald Walsh, who talks about how in in these moments of our lives in which we truly want to establish something new, we are invited, indeed called, to a time of letting go, uh, perhaps even a time of unknowing and unlearning the patterns that we have become so accustomed to living within. Neil Donald Walsh writes these words, yearning for a new way will not produce it. Only ending the old way can do that. You cannot hold on to the old all the while declaring that you want something new. The old will always defy the new. The old will deny the new. The old will decry the new. There is only one way to bring in the new. You must make room for it. My friends, our scriptures today speak of the Trinity as the ever creative, always renewing, dancing, spirited, joyful presence of God to you and to me. Can we in this moment offer ourselves to this renewing and reforming and transforming and creative spirit and be made new? Jesus tells us you cannot put new wine in old wineskins. It simply will not hold. Jesus invites us in this very moment to pick up our cross and move toward a death to the old way of being in the world that is so death-dealing to so many, and a resurrection into a life that gives respect and love and dignity to all. My friends, I, I pray so fervently that we might be able to be made new in this moment. Our God is always in the resurrection business. Our God is always seeking to make all things new. It doesn't mean we won't carry the burdens that we took to the cross, but we might be made new so that those burdens are, an, are not an imposition to others. I pray, I pray deeply that it might be so for us and for our country. Amen. And as we have now asked for God's transformative power to work within us, let us simply name those names before God that we are called in this moment to remember. Eric Garner, Ezel Ford, Michelle Cousseau, Tanisha Anderson, Tamir Rice, Natasha, Natasha McKenna, Walter Scott, Betty Jones, Philando Castile, Botham Jean, Atatiana Jefferson, Eric Reason, Dominique Clayton, Breonna Taylor, George Floyd.
And now in one voice, let us say together what we believe. Jesus Christ is God with humankind. He is the eternal Son of the Father, who became human and lived among us to fulfill the work of reconciliation. He is present in the church by the power of the Holy Spirit to continue and complete his mission. This work of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit is the foundation of all confessional statements about God, humanity, and the world. Therefore, the church calls all people to be reconciled to God and to one another. Friends, we come now to uh, this joyful feast at the table of our Lord. As we prepare to share in this holy meal, I would invite you to gather simple elements to participate with this time of sharing. If you have bread and juice or wine, that is perfectly appropriate. If you need to use potato chips and Pepsi, please do so. Maybe Ritz crackers and a glass of water would work. No matter how you do it, please understand that we are sitting at table with our risen Christ as we share in this this blessed and holy meal. Blessed are you who hunger for justice, for you will be satisfied. Blessed are you who thirst for righteousness, for you will drink deeply of the cup of joy. Blessed are you who yearn for reconciliation, for you will find peace. Blessed are you who are persecuted, for yours is the commonwealth of heaven. Blessed are we, for Christ calls us to this table where there is room for everyone and plenty for all. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God. In the beginning you created the heavens and the earth. Who are we, O God, that you would be mindful of us? Yet you have crowned us, all of us, with glory and honor. Therefore we praise you, joining the song of the universal church and the heavenly choir, as you join me in saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is Jesus Christ, our Savior, 
To Jesus, you have given all authority on he in heaven and on earth. Risen from the dead, ascended into heaven, still he leads us to make disciples, baptizing and teaching them in your holy name. Remembering your goodness and grace, we offer ourselves to you with gratitude as we share in this joyful feast. Please join me in saying, dying you destroyed our death, rising you restored our life. Lord Jesus, come in glory. Pour out your Holy Spirit, we pray, upon us and upon this bread and cup. Make us one in the body and blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord. By your Spirit, help us to live as sisters and brothers in the body of Christ and in the communion of saints and in the world community in which we live, sharing your love and peace with all the world. Through the Lord Jesus Christ, in the unity of the Spirit, we bless you, God of glory, now and forever. Amen. Amen. On the night that Jesus was betrayed, he sat at table with his disciples, people just like you and I, people just like George Floyd. And as he sat with them, he took the bread, and after giving thanks to God, he took it and he broke it. And he said to his disciples, this is my body which is broken for you. Whenever you take of this meal, do it in remembrance of me. And as they continued with their meal, Jesus then took the cup. And again, after giving thanks to God, he said to his disciples, this is the cup of the new covenant which is sealed in my blood, which is shed for forgiveness of sins. Whenever you take of this cup, do it in remembrance of me. So friends, we take of this holy meal, asking God to also break us of old patterns, of old prejudices, of old and tired hatreds and remake us in the image of Christ, the body of Christ broken for us. And we take the cup, joining with Christ in the new covenant, which is sealed now in the blood of many for the making of a new and transformed world, the blood of Christ. Let us pray. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to truly give ourselves for, to others. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. You're invited, as always, to participate fully in the life of the church with all of your gifts. There are very many ways to support your church. You can be in prayer during this time of unrest and coronavirus. Um, you can be actively in contact with one another, offering each other friendship and solace and uh, uh, an ease to the loneliness that some of us might be feeling. You could also share, if you are able, your financial gifts with the church that we might continue to be 
a voice for peace and justice in this world. At this time, our morning offering will be received. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, receive these, the gifts of your church at Palm Springs Presbyterian Church, and bless them for the work that you would put them to. Open us, O gracious God, to new understandings and new actions in the name of the one who died for us, Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Amen. Friends, it may seem that in this, in this moment of clouds and confusion that we might not be able to find the agency that we need to confront this moment with the truth and love and justice of the Christ that gathers us here. I'm reminded of the words of Isaiah who remembered in his own life the prophetic call that he received from God. And God says, and who shall I send out into the world? Who shall I send to carry my word into times of trouble? And Isaiah, and Isaiah said, here I am, Lord, send me. May it be so for each of us that we go in God's name, sharing God's love in whatever way we can. And in that, my friends, we have much agency.
And now may the love of the holy triune God, creator Christ and Holy Spirit, abide with you now and always. Go in peace. Amen. Pray.